Before I start, I just have a quick question for you guys. What are you guys afraid of? I'm really curious to know. So what are your fears? Just shout it out. Is everyone here just like not afraid of anything? Math class. <laughs> Math class. Yeah, that's a good one. That's good. Yeah. What is it? Okay. Anyone else? Okay. What? I'm just hearing like school in this yeah. area. Do you have any other like non-school related fears? Maybe? Spiders, Spiders Shiori. Yeah. <laughs> what about over here? Do we have any fears? Irrational or rational? Needles? That's a good one. I didn't hear that first service. It's a big one. What did you say? Do you guys have one? Maybe not. Maybe I'm hearing things. <laughs> Public speaking. <laughs> Anything else? Eighth graders. <laughs> Yeah, I'm scared of eighth graders too sometimes, no offense. <laughs> um, okay, so we all have fears, right? Um, <clears throat> I will say that personally, I have a lot of fears. Um, I am I'm a fraidy cat. <laughs> that's what, yeah, that's what I am. Um, you have a cat. Cats are scary too, man. Oh, <laughs> cats are, cats can be scary. Um, yeah, well, I would say that I'm quite the fraidy cat or scaredy cat. Um, because I do have a lot of fears. Um, one thing I am really afraid of, this only started like two years ago, I'm really scared of squirrels and chipmunks because I don't know the difference between squirrels and chipmunks. Or like when I see them, I don't know. So both chipmunks terrify me. Have chipmunks have tails. <laughs> squirrels have the big like fluffy tails and they scare me because like if I see one on the street, like I'm crossing to the other side because they scare me. And the reason for this was about two years ago, Two summers ago, I was working at um, Wharf Village at Magnetic Hill, if you've ever been there. I worked in the ice cream shop. And in the ice cream shop, the doors are like wide open, right, into like the outdoors. <laughs> and so sometimes like squirrels or something would come inside or like bugs. But there was this one day this squirrel kept coming inside the ice cream shop. And it was so like friendly. But, well, I don't even know if I would say friendly, but just so comfortable around people. And so outside the ice cream shop, there's a deck, right? And there are these tables, like picnic tables, and this lady was sitting at a picnic table just eating her ice cream, and the squirrel jumped on her shoulder. And so she's like, hey, there's a squirrel on me. And so like me as the employee was like, sorry, <laughs> like plucked the squirrel off. I didn't know what to do. So I text my boss. I'm like, hey, there's a squirrel inside the shop, and it's starting to like bother customers, and it won't leave. I don't know what to do. And she texts me back, and I kid you not, she goes, catch it. And I was like, you want me to catch this squirrel? So she told me to use like one of the big ice cream buckets we have and legitimately just catch this squirrel. And so like I'm just, I'm just working away and the squirrel comes, like it, the same squirrel comes back inside the ice cream shop. I'm like, okay, here we go. <laughs> so I grab one of our empty ice cream buckets. I go over and I like go up to the squirrel and it's just like, hello. <laughs> and so I'm like, okay. So I go to put the ice cream bucket like over the squirrel and I don't catch it, first of all. And it doesn't just like zoom right past me. No, it goes up my leg. It goes up my leg and we're wearing these aprons. That was our uniform. We had to wear these aprons in the ice cream shop and it clung to my apron and like at my knees is just like swinging back and forth. Like it was on like, I don't even know. I was terrified. So I'm like, oh my gosh, there's a squirrel on me like swatting it off and then it ran away. It never came back. So I mean like job well done, I guess. I didn't catch it, but it didn't come back. Um, but it was so terrifying. It like slid down my leg and I kid you not, I had scratches on my leg and I thought I had to get a rabies shot. It was so scary. <laughs> um, and so for whatever reason, whenever I have like close encounters with animals, um, then I grow a fear of them and I could list off the animals that I am afraid of, but I won't because that would take a while. Um, but yeah, the point is I have a lot of fears, big and small. Um, and I mean, we all get afraid, right? Like I'll say right now, I'm like kind of scared looking at all you guys and I'm like, do they think I'm a freak because I'm scared of squirrels? <laughs> I hope not, but point is we all have fears, um, big and small. And thank you to those of you who shared some of yours. <clears throat> but today I wanna share with you a story that, it's a familiar story, you probably heard it before, but it's a good one. Um, and it's a story where we see the disciples in the Bible um, were afraid. So we're just gonna get right into it. It's found in Matthew 8. We're starting at verse 23, if you guys wanna pull it up. Um, if not, it's on the screen. Excuse me. I should not have eaten breakfast right before I came up. <laughs> anyway, we're just going to get right into it. I'm going to read it. It says, Then Jesus got into the boat and started across the lake with his disciples. Suddenly, a fierce storm struck the lake with waves breaking, in, with waves breaking into the boat. But Jesus was sleeping. The disciples went and woke him up, shouting, Lord, save us. We're going to drown. 
which I would say is a completely valid response if you're in a tiny, like this isn't the Titanic, okay? This is way before, like they were in a small little like fishing boat, I presume. And there's like a giant storm. Like I think it's a very valid response to be like, Lord save us, we're going to drown. Like obviously they're panicking. But Jesus responds, he wakes up and he goes, why are you afraid? You have so little faith. Now, if I were on a boat and there was a huge storm and I thought I was going to drown and like say I'm in the boat with Annabelle, okay? Annabelle and I are in the boat and she's asleep and I think I'm gonna die and I'm like, Annabelle, wake up, there's a giant storm. And she goes, Shoei, why are you afraid? Like, it's fine. I would probably slap her in the face, to be completely honest, because I'm terrified. And if you look outside, obviously, she's so offended right now. <laughs> I'm like, obviously, I'm afraid, right? So I'd be like, Annabelle, why would you say that? But that's what Jesus says to him. He, so, he says, why are you afraid? You have so little faith. And then he got up, and he rebuked the wind and the waves, and suddenly there was a great calm. The disciples were amazed. Who is this man, they asked. Even the winds <clears throat> and waves obey him. So the disciples were obviously afraid, I think completely valid reason. Um, they think they're going to drown, right? They wake Jesus up, and when Jesus sees their fear, he asks, why are you so afraid? And I imagine him saying this, like, to the disciples, like, Jesus wakes up from his nap. He's like, sees a storm, and he's like, why are you afraid? Like, I'm right here. I'm Jesus. Like, duh, you're going you're to be fine, right? And then he stops the storm like it was absolutely nothing and leaves all the disciples on the boat like, whoa, <laughs> Because Jesus is that powerful, right? And of course, he's right there in the boat with them. So why are they afraid? And that's what Jesus is saying. He's like, I'm right here. I'm Jesus. I'm the son of God. Like, you're good. You're fine. Why are you afraid? Why don't you have faith in me? But we do that all the time, right? Like, like the disciples, we have Jesus right there in our boat with us. But we're afraid. We're of little faith. Because being afraid means that we're not fully trusting. If we fully trusted God, we wouldn't be afraid of him handling it. And just like us, the disciples were afraid. And Jesus tells them, why are you afraid? Why don't you have faith in me? And I think Jesus is saying the same thing to us. Why are we afraid? Why don't we have faith in God, who's right there with us? See, Jesus is in the boat with us in the midst of our own storms, and we have no reason to be afraid that he won't look out for us. Right? He can stop a, few, uh, he can stop a storm in a few words, as it says in the story. But we all have storms, right? They're inevitable. We can't avoid problems and troubles and things that will evidently bring us pain and fear. But what we can do is acknowledge that Jesus is still near. He's still in the boat with us, even in those moments. And I really like this quote that I saw probably about a month back. It said, peace is not the absence of trouble, but peace is Jesus being present in the midst of trouble. And I really like that because it's true. We're going to have storms no matter what. We're going to have pain. We're going to have fear in our lives. And no level, there's like we can't reach this level of peace on earth where we're not going to have those storms. But we can invite Jesus into those spaces where we have fear and we have trouble and feel his peace through that. I think it's really misleading to say that, you know, when we follow God, we trust God, our lives will be perfect because that's entirely untrue. On earth as humans, we're going to have pain, we're going to have fear, but we can get through that and we can handle that when we lean on Jesus because we can't get through it on our own. And the Bible says that. The Bible says that God will give us peace. And I really love the Psalms where David talks about the peace that God brings him. I think it's really beautiful. Um, And Psalm 23 is a very famous psalm, but I'm going to read it right now. And it says, The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. He lets me rest in green meadows. He leads me beside peaceful streams. He renews my strength. He guides me along right paths, bringing honor to his name. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid, for you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. You prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. You honor me by anointing my head with oil. My cup overflows with blessings. Surely your goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life, and I will live in the house of the Lord forever. And while I know that's a very famous psalm, I find it really beautiful and really reassuring to know that God takes care of us. And, you know, we have no reason, we have no need to be afraid when there is such a powerful yet loving God who watches over us and who can give us his peace. And yet we see this, we read this in the Bible, right? We know this and we learn to believe this, but yet we still have fear in our lives. We're still afraid. We all are. And it's hard. Like, when I'm afraid, it can be so hard to trust 
God's plan for me and, and trust that things are going to be okay, even though I read this in the Bible, right, and I've been told my whole life, like, you don't need to be afraid. God is here. And while I know that and I believe that, it's hard. Can we agree? Like, it's, it's hard, right, when we're afraid to not be afraid. <laughs> like I said at the start, like, I have a lot of fears. I'm a worry war. I'm a fraidy cat. That's just the way I am. <laughs> and for a lot of my life, I'd say I felt kind of stuck or trapped by anxiety and fear. It's something I kind of conceal, but deep down, like, I, I have insecurities. I have fears. And sometimes I really feel trapped by that. And even there are nights now that I just lie awake thinking about everything that I'm just afraid about, and it's so consuming and overbearing. And it's a really frustrating feeling, I'd say, feeling like you can't trust God or just struggling to do that because it is really hard. I'd like to share with you guys a little story. Um, a storm I had growing up, when I was little, I was really afraid of dying, which I know sounds so dark, but I had this like fear of death. The idea of the unknown like terrified me and the thought of death literally kept me up at night. Like I would go to bed and I would just think about it like, I'm gonna die one day. <laughs> and it was, it was really scary, it genuinely scared me as a kid. And for years I hated the idea of dying and it was just something that was always like taking up room in my mind even though I tried to ignore it, right? And even though I grew up being taught and believing that when I die, I would go to heaven if I followed Jesus and accepted him as my savior, I still had that fear. And I had to remind myself constantly that my fears were lying to me. That I didn't need to fear death, but I needed to replace my fear with truth. And that was a lesson I had to learn over time as my fear grew. I couldn't just rely on my own understanding, rely on myself to get through this, but I needed to replace my fear with God's truth and lean on God to overcome this fear that I had. And even now, there are nights when I lie awake just afraid of whatever, right? We all have just things that bring us anxiety, bring us fear. And it can be anything, and sometimes it's nothing. And I'm sure you guys can relate to, us, to this. We have days where, like, everything's fine. And yet, I just feel so panicked, or I'm afraid, or, you know what I mean? Like, it's just you're just hit with this anxiety and it's overbearing, it's overwhelming. And I'm sure you've all had those moments in your life where you're just overcome with fear and you can't control it and a lot of times you can't explain it and it's a really sucky feeling. <laughs> Let's just be real, it is. And okay, so for me personally, my default reaction when I'm scared is I cry. <laughs> Straight up, when I'm scared, I just wanna cry. And maybe for you, maybe you cry, maybe you just keep it inside, maybe you get angry, you know, whatever it is, we kind of have our reactions. And I can think of so many, like, times where I've just spent days and nights just, like, crying and breaking down in fear over so many different things, right? Like, fear of the future, fear of something I did wrong or something I did in the past and the consequences of that, fear that I'm not enough, fear that I'm not loved. And maybe you have those fears, too. And the truth is that fear is a result of our lack of trust in God. Because we need to trust God that when he says, like, you're loved, you, I have plans for you, I'm not going to forsake you. But then we believe something else, and that's where our fear comes from, that we believe that, what if nobody loves me? What if I don't have a future? What if I'm not going to be successful? But God says, no, 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 I have plans for you, and I'm going to, I've got, I've got you. And we've got to replace our fear with that truth, with his truth that he's going to pull us through it. When we're afraid, we need to bring that fear and those thoughts and those feelings to Jesus, who we have acknowledged is in the boat with us, and we need to replace our fear with truth. And by knowing this truth and believing in it, that is what gives us peace and shows us that our fears are lying to us. And one of my favorite verses right now touches on this, and it's a verse I say to myself all the time, like in my head and out loud. Um, Whenever I feel like just throughout my day anxious or, you know, there's just this thought like going through my mind, I say this verse over and over again. And for me, that, that is my acknowledgement and my reminder that Jesus right here in this moment, even though I'm afraid, is here with me right now. And I don't need to be afraid. And actually on Friday, I had like this huge math test and I was so stressed Friday. 
Um, and I had a Red Bull, which was a mistake. And <laughs> so I was just so filled with like anxiety. And I was like, oh, I don't want to do, I'm not going to do my math test. I have so much homework. My sermon's on Sunday and I'm still not finished. And then I was like, right now what I'm doing is exactly what I'm going to be speaking about on Sunday right now. And so I was just overcome with fear. And I, I was saying this verse over my head. And it's actually my lock screen so that I can like just say it. Or every time I open my phone, I see it. And it's like a reminder. And I have a different translation on my phone. But it says, in the multitude of my anxieties within me, your comforts delight my soul. And I, I said this to myself like over and over again I was, as I was going into my test. And I was like, I've got this. Like <laughs> I would be kind of hypocritical of me to be working on my sermon and then that day I was just so filled with anxiety and fear and I I was just trying to do it on my own right and so but then I realized I was like no 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 I need to give this to God and I was just reminded like yeah right now I'm anxious and there's not much I can do about it like I already drank the Red Bull I can't like (laughs) right so I had this fear within me and of course I'm nervous for my math test of course I'm scared that my sermon is not going to be done on time but I can still find comfort in that God's going to get me through this Right, whether I get a hundred on this test or I get a zero, I'm hoping it's a hundred. <laughs> I can still ch- put my trust in God and know that He is good and that He's He's got me. So that's a verse I love to tell myself all the time um, throughout my day because, like I said, I'm a worry wart, <laughs> and I need that reminder: like God's got me. And although things are hard right now, even though things might suck, even though I'm afraid, God is still good, and I can I can find joy and I can find peace in that. And so those are some of my storms, and we all have them, right? Whether it's a test at school, whether it's a due date, whether it's, you know, whatever is going on, we all have storms. And right now, I want you guys to actually think about what your storm is. What is causing you anxiety, fear, pain? What is troubling your mind? What storms, what thoughts do you need to put God in the middle of right now? One that some of you guys might relate to. I'm like looking around the room. I see a few of you. Um, Maybe you're a grad this year. Now this is relevant to me because I'm graduating high school this year. And I know like it's scary to think about the future, right? Like you're thinking like what is next year going to look like? What career am I going to have, right? Where am I going to live? How much money am I going to make? What am I going to do with the rest of my life? And if that's you right now, first of all, I want you to know like I'm in the exact same spot and I get it. (laughs) I know it is terrifying. Um, But second, like, I want you to just acknowledge that, like, yeah, it's scary, right? Like, maybe you're in middle school and you're thinking about going into high school. Maybe you've just joined a new sport. Maybe you're graduating. Maybe you're already in university and you're like, is this what I even want to do with my life? I don't know. But whatever it is, I want you to just acknowledge that, yeah, I'm afraid in this moment. I'm scared for my future because it's uncertain. I don't know what it's going to look like. But then also acknowledge that Jesus is right there in this storm with you, right? You're not alone in the boat. Jesus is there and he's helping you navigate the storm and you just have to ask and go to him. And he will pull you out of it. He will give you peace. So you just got to trust him, right? All of us have areas in our life where we need to put our trust in God. We need to have Jesus in the boat with us, helping us to navigate these storms because we can't do it on our own. And we can try, and I know I have, (laughs) and I can tell you firsthand it does not work. So we got to give it to Jesus. So I don't know what your storm is. Maybe things are rough at home right now, right? Maybe you're going through hard times. Maybe your relationship or a friendship is falling apart or you're just having a hard time figuring it out. Maybe things aren't going the way you want them to. Maybe you had big plans for where you thought you'd be in your life right now and it's just not working out. And maybe you aren't in a storm right now. Maybe you just feel stuck. Maybe you just don't feel God right now. Maybe you're just having a hard time putting your trust in him. You feel like you got left behind. You're not even in a boat. Whatever it is, just give it to Jesus. Talk to him. Know that he is close, that he is beside you, and trust the plans he has for you because he has plans for you. He has a future laid out for you, and I promise his plans are perfect. And even if it doesn't happen in an instant, right, we have these fears and we say, okay, God, I'm trusting you, but I still feel afraid right now. It's going to happen, but over time, honestly, I can promise you, going to Jesus, it gives you true peace in your life that is just incomparable. And that is my prayer for all of you, and I hope it's your prayer too, that you would just give those storms to Jesus. So that's actually what we're going to do right now. So I'm going to ask some of the uh, student leaders, you guys have pen and paper, and I want you guys to just 
hand them out, and I want every person in this room to have a piece of, a piece of paper and a pen. So just take a second right now and do that. Do you guys have pen and paper? Yeah, you do. <laughs> so hand those out, and I want you guys to just each have a piece of paper and a pen, and just hold on to those for a second, and you're going to do something with them. And as you're getting this piece of paper and this pen, I want you to think about what your storm is. I want you to think, where am I not trusting God in my life? What am I not giving to him and saying, hey, God, I trust you with this, even though I'm afraid? Maybe it's your future. Maybe you're like, hey, I don't know what my future is going to look like, and I'm, I'm afraid, and I'm having a hard time giving it to God and trusting that he's going to take care of it. Maybe that's your storm. Maybe you're struggling. Maybe you have fears. Maybe you have anxieties. Maybe you feel stuck. Maybe you're just like, hey, God, I feel like I'm having a hard time trusting you because I don't feel you right now. But whatever it is, I want you to think of that storm right now. And when you think of it, I want you to write it down on that piece of paper. So take a minute. Maybe you need to bow your heads and close your eyes. Maybe you just need to sit there and think, what is your storm? And just write it down on that piece of paper right now and hang on to it. So think of your storm. Think of that area in your life where you're not trusting God. And maybe it's more than one. And if that's the case for you, go ahead, write down as many as you like. Write down one, write down ten. Think of your storm and think about what area of your life you need to pray over and just give it to God. And say, hey, God, I'm really struggling to trust you with this. Hey, God, I have a lot of fear about this part of my life. Something's going on right now. I'm going through something. I'm really scared of this. I have this fear that's just consuming my thoughts and my mind. I want you to write that down. And just, I know society likes to tell us to just find distractions and to just, you know, find things that, that bring you happiness and distract you from your fears, but I don't want you to do that right now. I want you to think of your fear and say, yes, this is what I'm scared of. This is what I have a hard time trusting God with, and just accept it. Acknowledge that we're not perfect, and we have fears and anxieties and troubles and pain, and write it down and acknowledge it. So once you've thought of your storm, you've written it down, I want you guys to close your eyes, bow your heads, ignore all the distractions around you. If someone's still writing, that's okay, keep going. But just delete the distractions, ignore your neighbors. And I want you to just take this moment and pray over that storm. In fact, I want you to take that piece of paper and I want you to hold it up as if you're giving it to God. So take that piece of paper when you've written your storm, hold it up, and just pray to God and say, hey God, I'm giving you my storm. This thing, this fear that I've been holding on to that has been consuming my thoughts and my mind, I'm giving it to you. Hey God, this thing that I really want to hold on to but I know I can't control, I'm giving it to you God because I know that you can control it, that you can take care of it, that you've got plans for me, that you love me, that you're not going to forsake me, you're not going to forget about me. You're going to give me a good life, so Lord, I'm giving it to you. Although I'm terrified of what my future is going to look like, and I want to make the decisions for myself, I'm not going to. I'm going to give it to you, God, and God, let your will be done, not mine. So hold up that piece of paper, your storm, and just pray over it, guys. Ask for his guidance and his peace. Say, hey, God, I'm, I need your peace right now. I need your comfort. I need you to reassure me and show me that things are going to be okay. And if I have to wait a week, if I have to wait 10 years, I will. But Lord, I'm trusting you that things are going to be okay. I don't know what the future is going to look like. And it's scary. And it might not go the way I want it to. But I'm trusting you, God, because you're not going to let me go. So take a few minutes right now, guys, just in silence. And make that your prayer.
So if you need to keep praying, keep praying. But something else I really want to encourage you guys to do is if you have a friend next to you, pray for them. If you're just like, hey, what are you struggling with? Because honestly, there's no shame in our fears, right? We all have things where we struggle. We all have our fears, our anxiety. And I want you guys to pray for each other. I want you guys to just be honest about it and just say, hey, friend, what are you struggling with? Oh, hey, I'm really struggling with this. Hey, can I pray for you? And I know it's terrifying, <laughs> but that's, that's the point, right? We don't need to be afraid because God's with us. So let's overcome that fear this morning and let's just pray for our friends. And if you feel like you need prayer, you can ask a leader. There are leaders in this room. You can ask a friend. So I just want you guys to take a few minutes and pray over your fears. And if you want to pray alone, that's fine. If you want to pray with a friend, go for it. But give your storms to Jesus and know that he's in the boat with you. So just take a few more minutes to pray, guys. Heavenly Father, I just thank you right now that we can come to you when we're afraid. Lord, you are good to us. You are faithful. You love us. And that is so evident because you give us peace in the midst of our storms. Lord, you are right there in the boat with us. That When we are afraid, we don't have to hesitate. We can go right to you. And Lord, we can just give it to you. To you. And in return, Lord, you give us peace. You guide us. Lord, we don't want our fears to control our lives. God, we don't want to be constantly overcome with fear and anxiety because it's hard. And God, you know that. You understand that. And you know what storms each and every one of us has in our lives. And God, you look out for us. And so I pray over everyone in this room, Lord, that when they are afraid, when they have storms, they would bring them to you, God, and just say, I'm trusting you with this. Although it's hard, although it feels like, I don't know if I'm going to get through it. Although it's out of my hands, Lord, it's in your hands now. And Lord, I trust you. So God, I just pray that that is everyone's prayer. God, I thank you for your goodness. I thank you for your everlasting peace.
I thank you that even though we have storms, we can still be reminded of your faithfulness. I thank you that even though it can seem like there's so much evil in this world, God, you are still good. That things can be going so wrong, but God, you are still good. And I hope that these students remember that, that even though everything else might suck, God, you are still good. You are still present. You're looking out for us. God, I pray that that would just resonate in the hearts and minds of these students. Lord, that that would be their prayer when times are hard. Lord, that they would just go to you. God, you are our Father. You are our Shepherd. And we can run to you. We can depend on you through everything. And Lord, you want us to. And I thank you for that, God. Lord, I thank you for all these students in this room. I thank you that I got to share this message with them and that they got to pray together. Lord, the community in this room is unbelievable. And I just, I thank you that we have the space, the opportunity, the people that we can just pray over one another, another and that we can be honest that, yeah, we're scared. And times are hard and, and life is hard sometimes, but God, you're still good. And we can encourage each other and we find encouragement through knowing that you're going to get us through it. God, I thank you for that. I thank you for your blessings. I pray this in your name. Amen.